Okay, Tully Ho there, champs. Now, this is one that I get asked about all the time, the Aero 15. I get hammered with that. I get slammed. Can you review? And yes, I have finally got myself one of these in the house. This is the Aero 15X with the GTX 1070 Max-Q and the 8750H hex core CPU. So that's six cores. So I've literally had this for about 24 hours. I've actually moved all these other reviews aside because, hey, I listen to you guys. I know that you want this reviewed straight away. So this is just a classic sort of hands-on first impressions. I'm going to tell you some benchmark scores, which sort of blew my mind. Now, just looking at it, the build quality is really good. CNC, aluminium there. I think the palm rest is actually plastic, but the actual chassis that houses the laptop, all the components, etc., is actually aluminium there. It's black, it's matte black, and you know that black's not my favourite if you follow my channel. And if you're new around here, please consider liking and subscribing because I like to make my YouTube channel a bit of a community, and I really do listen to you guys, and I will test whatever you guys want. Obviously, watching this video, you're interested in this. So anyway, the build quality straight away is very good. You can actually lift the um, lid with one hand so it has a nicely balanced hinge there so a nice touch there and just picking the thing up it doesn't feel any heavier or bulkier than the xps 15 or the macbook pro it just feels around the same sort of weight and size i mean it's slightly thicker than the xps 15 but not by that much and it houses like super power in here like it actually amazes me that this actually houses a gtx 1070 max q so i'm happy with the build quality it feels really thick and light for something that houses these kind of components the keyboard actually when i started typing with it felt pretty good i don't have any major complaints with it except it's offset a bit which you know sort of takes a bit to get used to that the rgb is pretty cool i mean it's not a gaming laptop it sort of blurs the line in between sort of like a creator content creators laptop and a gaming laptop so rgb wasn't necessary on this but it spices it up it's pretty cool i think and it has that understated look it has a more utilitarian look. It doesn't look gamery and it doesn't look like a delicate, dainty piece of art like the MacBook Pro would look like. It looks like a weapon. It looks like a tool, utilitarian, understated. It just looks nice. Straight away, I could tell the trackpad. It's not my favorite trackpad, I'll just say that. I am getting used to it now. You got to learn how to click on the left side for the left clicks and the right on the right. You sort of, if you try and click anywhere, it doesn't always work, but um, it's definitely not the worst trackpad I've used, but um, there are better trackpads. I'll just tell you straight off the back it uses those elan drivers i don't know why you would use a trackpad that's not a windows precision trackpad so first thing i wanted to test of course is thermals and i could not get this to throttle an actual fact let's just do a little test in the background so you'll be able to hear the fans now you'll hear it's pretty silent at the moment please you know i'm sorry for the planes i can't do nothing about it at the moment it's just uh they've decided to fly over today if i actually have a look at the fan i've got it set on quiet you can set the fan to your own fan curve if you want which i have done where i basically make the fan curve super quiet and basically not turn on well it's actually the lowest is 30 percent but i make it so oh actually it's changed i hasn't saved my settings there but um you can go in there and change it to quiet or um, gaming i'm just going to put it on gaming for now so you'll hear the fans crank up but just to show you the ida 64 test and the good news is it doesn't throttle it does not throttle and i was actually torture testing this i was um charging while i was doing this stability test yeah if you so if you look at the cpu frequency it was over three gigahertz then and it's just cranked down a little bit under three gigahertz now this is all core so all six cores going at once when you game it will sustain 3.9 to 4 gigahertz indefinitely it won't drop below that and i was actually even able to clock the gtx 1070 i'll cover this all in my full review but thermals bang on like there is a price to pay it does get loud i mean it's not going to defy the laws of physics here i mean it's a really small package to house these kind of components in fact i don't know another laptop that's this thin and light that has these sort of specs other than maybe the zephyrus which is more a gaming laptop anyway and actually when you open it up it does get a bit thicker but in terms of these sort of content creation devices xps 15 you know macbook pro you know there's nothing that comes near this in terms of the power it has in terms of GPU. And that will sit there 
2.9, pretty much indefinitely, all six cores boost in there. I mean, the temperatures aren't even 80 degrees, having a look at that now. So, so that is fantastic. All core, nearly three gigahertz, pretty much indefinitely, and we're getting not even 80 degrees, fantastic. Obviously, when you game, you're gonna introduce heat from the GPU as well, but the GPU tends to stay at around 70 degrees. I'll turn this off, you can probably hear the fans. And I will turn the fan profile to silent. Okay, it's on silent now. So I could not get the CPU to throttle and the fact that it can sustain 2.9 all cores is like fantastic. That is killer. You gotta remember it has six cores. But if you're not pegging all the cores, like when you're gaming, you never peg the CPU 100%. So when you game, you'll get up to four gigahertz pretty much indefinitely when you game and the temperatures will be in the 80s for the CPU and in the 70s for the GPU. So straight away, I'm happy with the thermals. Yeah, it does get loud, but it doesn't get louder than any other gaming laptop. It's probably louder than the XPS 15, but you know, look at the components it's housing. But in terms of gaming laptops, I mean, it's definitely not louder than the loudest gaming laptop I've reviewed. So thermals are good. Sound is loud, but, but all things considered, not too bad. And as you'll hear now, it's pretty much silent. I mean, you can hear the fan a little bit on idle. Not going to lie, yeah, I can hear it now a little bit. You probably can't hear that. It would be nice if that fan could ramp down lower. It may be able to do that with a firmware upgrade. Someone asked me to look at the BIOS 2 to see if there was a RAID function because this has two M.2 slots. There is no RAID function as of now. I don't know if it's compatible with RAID, I don't think so, but it's definitely not in the BIOS, but it does have Optane support. You can put like a SATA M.2 in there that's a little bit slower, maybe 500 reads and writes, and then put an Optane module in there and get, you know, super fast speeds with the caching of Optane. So that's a good thing like to consider like because SATA based M.2 SSDs are a lot cheaper than the NVMe ones. So pair that with Optane, you get the best of both worlds sort of thing, speed and, you know, price to gigabytes. Now this is what really blew my mind. Um, I was actually able to overclock it. So this here is the overclock score. If I don't overclock the GPU, it'll be 12,700. But that score, 13,400, this is Fire Strike, okay, just a normal regular Fire Strike. That is over 30% faster than the Razer Blade Pro with a GTX 1060 in it over 30 percent now you've got to account for this has two extra cores so that just boosts the score of fire strike just to have those two extra cores because it does have a cpu test in it and this is literally over double the score of the xps 15 with the gtx 1050 but you've got to remember it has the extra two cores which is around seven to eleven percent faster just having those extra two cores and you have a gtx 1070 which makes up the rest of that gap and it really surprised me that even when i did overclock it i'll cover this more in my full review gaming review or have video editing review i will compare it to other eighth generation laptops as they come through here so that really amazed me that i actually could overclock the gpu and roughly when you're gaming the gpu frequency is around 1500 as i said before the, the cpu frequency is pretty much 3.94 gigahertz now if you overclock the gpu you can get it up to 1600 megahertz but then the cpu does get a little bit hotter so it climbs up into the high 80s maybe just touches 90 and then the cpu will throttle down a little bit now i want to make it clear the cpu is not throttling its base frequency is 2.2 gigahertz what happens is it goes from 3.94 gigahertz to 3.8 to 3.7 something like that when you overclock the gpu but you end up getting a higher 3d mark score just because you're overclocking that gpu so this is not going to throttle gaming i will have more tests coming up soon very impressed with it so far let me know in the comments what you want me to test. I'll be doing a render test, well, actually right now. And make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this. And also follow me on Twitter because I will be posting updates on this. So thanks guys for watching. Make sure you let me know down there what you want. And until next time, guys, tally ho.